Okay. Kat Chancellor with Stamp Art Connection and StampArtConnection.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I'm coming to you live, and hopefully you can hear me. Okay. And all I want to do for my live stream, just kind of looking for how I can mute. Okay, hopefully you can hear me. If anyone is out there, uh, please let me know. Oh, I have. Uh, somebody's out there. Oh, great. Okay. And hopefully you can hear me. Thumbs up if you can hear me. Okay. I wanted to, um, I wanted to do a special little live session here. This is primarily for, um, new stampers who might be a little intimidated about coloring. Now, one of my customers said, hey, Kat, I'm a terrible at coloring. And what can I do to become better at coloring? The other question they asked is, hey, what are all these coloring products that you have available? How do you use them? How do I use watercolor pencils how do i use these blends what's the difference between stamping blends and stamping right markers and then here's the watercolor pencils how do i use all these things well one of the the you know one of the things that that i hope i can show you tonight and just a you know just a 30 minutes or so is to kind of give you a demonstration about what all these different and they're called mediums or media how they can be used how you can have fun with them and kind of some of the the basic steps you need in order to use them effectively now if there is someone out there uh please let me know if you can if you can hear me because I've had to mute I've had to mute myself so that I don't have the playback okay so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna jump into it now I've pulled out stamping blends I've pulled out stamping right markers and I've pulled out some of the watercolor pencils and they're both in the same color this is pool party calypso coral pool party calypso coral and i don't have pool party in the watercolor pencil but i do have calypso coral and i've just pulled some bermuda bay okay so we're gonna we're gonna play with these and i'm gonna show you um you know here's a whole pack and these are available in the annual catalog and you know we're going to be having a uh, free shipping if you haven't gotten my newsletter free shipping beginning uh, tonight at midnight now to begin with using any of these different types of coloring you're going to have to kind of understand some of the line art that you're going to need to stamp 
in order to use these uh, effectively. You're also going to have to need to understand that not all paper is equal when it comes to using these different types of coloring. For example, stamping blends are alcohol-based markers. You have two different colors. You have a light and dark of the same color. This is Clipso Coral light and dark, light, and here's dark. And this is Pool Party light and dark. These are meant to blend because they are alcohol-based. Because they're meant to blend, they will not, you cannot use them with a Memento ink because, or, or rather you can use them with Memento ink because this is alcohol and this is water-based. So they're not going to run together. But when you start getting into watercolor, Watercolor is water suitable, so you're not going to be able to use Memento. You're going to have to use an ink that is a solvent ink that does not mix with water so that you can use your watercolor pencils and, it, and your ink, your line art will not bleed. So that's kind of the rule for your watercolor. Always use stays on ink. And this ink comes in two colors. It comes in a saddle brown and it comes in jet black. Now these Stampin' Write markers are also water-based as well. So if you're not careful, these will also um, kind of blur when you use them with something like Memento. But you can still use them. You just have to be a little bit more careful. And we're, we're going to go ahead and demonstrate that. So these are kind of like just a regular colored marker, no big deal. But these are definitely water-based. You have to use a solvent ink. These are alcohol-based, and you can use a water-based ink as your line art. So those are kind of like the, the beginning, the rules. Okay, now what about paper? Well. If you use regular cardstock with your watercolor pencils, they're going to, the cardstock cannot handle the water that you need to blend the colors with the watercolor based pencils. And the paper is going to start to fall apart and it's going to start to, um, the fibers, it's just, you're just going to get a hot mess. So you have to use watercolor paper. And this paper is also available in the catalog and it's known as fluid 100 watercolor paper so it's special paper to be used for anything that is that you're going to use uh, water with now you're going to stamp using the solvent ink so that the ink will not run when you're using the water and the watercolor pencils now your memento inks you can use your regular cardstock that's fine you just go ahead and stamp on your regular cardstock with your Memento Black ink, stamp your line art, and then you can go ahead and color with your alcohol inks. I haven't used my stamp and write, write markers in a long time. So we're going to just play with them because I'm not really sure what they're going to do because I predominantly have gotten very comfortable using my stamping blends and I've gotten very comfortable with using uh, watercolor pencils, but I pulled them out because I want to play with all three uh, for you this evening. Okay, now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in a stamp set. This is retired, but I wanted to pull in some line art here that I can kind of color, and it's just kind of simple because what I was coloring before, and I'll I'll probably show you is I was coloring something like this. But see, this is the kind of, of um, image that will basically make any new stamper run for the hills. It's like, oh my God, I can't, I can't do that. It's just too much. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with something very easy like this shape. And I'm going to kind of talk through some pointers so that this will no longer be as intimidating because this is actually a very fun uh, stamp set. And it's just a shame. I just don't want you to feel like you're intimidated and you can't 
uh, take on something like this. Okay, so we're going to use the, the these balloon shapes for above the clouds. Now, oh, by the way, today is um, Sunday, and we're right beginning the International Balloon Fiesta. I think it's the 50, 51st uh, International Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta. Um, so it's rather it's rather an appropriate image for tonight. Okay. So let me just kind of move these out of the way. And we're going to go ahead and stamp some images. Now I'm using this, this stamping uh, platform here because um, I just kind of want to make it easy on myself. Now we're going to start with memento. So I'm just going to go ahead and ink up my memento. And we're going to go ahead and stamp. We're going to stamp a couple of these. Let's make sure I get some good line art. Yes, we have some wonderful, wonderful weather here in New Mexico to enjoy, to enjoy our balloon fiesta. And the skies are full of hundreds of balloons every morning. It is just a... a just beautiful. If you've never seen it, it's definitely something that you have to see. The entire Rio Grande Valley just has hundreds and hundreds of balloons. And they're usually early in the morning and then till about 11 o'clock. And then the balloons kind of begin to land. But it's really a beautiful, a beautiful event. Last year we had a lot of rain. So it was a pretty much a muddy mess. And we're just really glad that we're able to have some really beautiful weather this year beautiful fall weather okay i have two two images stamped with memento using a regular cardstock so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to put my memento ink away and now i'm going to take on my stays on and i have here just a piece of watercolor paper and we're going to go ahead and stamp now, stays on will stain your stamp. Once you stamp stamp with stays on, it will be stained. Now, it you could you, you may have heard very imperceptibly that it was a little sticky when I lifted the stamp from the paper. You want to make sure that your stays on pad is a little juicy, not too juicy. But you don't want, when you kind of press down, you don't want it to stick too much. Now, that was perfect. Um, I had a bit of a, of a dry pad there, and uh, it was, it, when it moves, because the ink gets very sticky, I'm just using this stays on cleaner because I'm just kind of like to make sure I clean my my stamps um if you let it kind of pull your paper what happens is that you run the risk of the paper will move and the next time your stamp comes down on your paper you'll get a blurred image so you really want to make sure and I hadn't inked I hadn't inked my stays on pad in a while so once I added some ink to it, um, it inked much better. So I just kind of wanted to kind of give you that tip. So, okay, so it comes in two colors and uh, it is available in the annual catalog. Okay, so now let's just go ahead and I'm gonna put my stamping platforms aside and we're going to go ahead and we're gonna begin, I'm just gonna go ahead and begin with the stamping right markers. And I'm going to pull in a little bit so that you can kind of see. Okay, Memento Black Ink on regular cardstock using my Stampy Right markers. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead. And the markers have been re-engineered. These are old, but you have kind of a narrow tip. And then you have a kind of a, a brush tip. So I'm just going to show you that all you do, and I hope this is... This is just basically like 
like just coloring, right? Just going to color your image. You're just filling it in. Now, the limitation to something like this is it's a little streaky. Okay, it's a little streaky. See that? So there's a, a bit of a limitation on what this marker can do. If you want it to be a little bit more even, you probably want to take some very even strokes, very even strokes within your image, kind of just following along, very even like that. Okay, now you can kind of see the difference when I just kind of went in, like I was just, you know, coloring away, but then you get a little bit more, you kind of understand what the tool can do for you and you get a much better, much better image. So then let's try this. Let's try our pool party here. Or rather, I could pick another color. Let me try. Let me try this color. What is this? This is melon mambo. Okay, so let's color this in melon mambo We're using that same technique. Just kind of bring it down. Just kind of very even strokes right along each other. using that brush tip and you can turn it around and you can go like this kind of outline it a little there we go and if we need to just kind of use that just that narrow end of our brush tip So you can see I get a much even, a more even um, color application when my technique for using this particular media is kind of just like long strokes, okay, side by side instead of, and you can see, you can see the difference where I just kind of like colored, like I was just coloring in a coloring book. And then the difference when I just very methodically kind of work through my image. Okay. So that is using our stamp and write markers. Now there's other things you can do with it, but um, I'm, I'm not going to cover that right now. I just kind of wanted to cover how we colored that. Now let's take this same image and let's bring in our stamping blends now we have a light and dark and we have a light and dark in pool party so let's use the same the same process we're going to do the pool party and here i'm going to use my large i have a large another nice kind of a large brush applicator and i'm just going to go there I'm just going to, again, you have to kind of use measured strokes. And you get a much cleaner application. Now, let's go ahead and use the light Calypso Coral doing the same technique. And then I'm going to show you how you can use the other, the dark. alcohol marker because these come as a set they come in light and dark okay isn't that beautiful now take the dark and I like to take the finer tip okay the finer nib and just outline
And what this does, <clears throat> take your dark one, is it's going to give your color a little bit more, you're going to be able to add shading with color. And then you can go back with your lighter color and you can use your brush nib and you can just kind of run, just run along where the light and the dark meet. Or you can use your other nib and just kind of run back and forth where the dark and the light meet. And what you're doing is you're just kind of blending because these are blending markers. And you can almost begin to see how it, it gives it some added dimension, added shape. So I'm going to take my, my light marker here. And I'm just going to kind of just go and just kind of run that back and forth. And I'm kind of blending this color into the lighter color. to give it a little bit more dimension. So now let's compare the two images that we've done. You can see that this is the stamp and write marker. Okay, and I'll write it right here. This is the stamping right marker, and these are the stamping blends. And you can see the difference. You have you have more color between your one color than you just have this flat color. So you have a little bit more fun you can have with that. So I don't have, I don't have, let's see, do I have magenta? I have real red. See, I don't, I'm looking for my stamping blends because I want to do the same. Well, I have Poppy. I have Poppy Parade. So I'm going to do this one in Poppy Parade. I have light and dark. So let's do this one with the light and let's see how, how we can do with this one. Now, I'm using the same technique. I'm just going to go ahead. I'm using the light. And I'm just going to go ahead and apply my color. And I can turn my image around and I can go ahead and pull my color in like this. I'm going to pull in my light pool party and I'm going to just Okay, so now let's take my dark pool party with the tiny nib and let's just kind of just, let's just outline one side. See, I just put it on one side. And then let's take our dark This is our dark poppy parade. And then let's go ahead and blend. Just 
just blending between that light and dark right there with using my light Okay, and you can begin to see the difference between this image and this image. You can begin to see the added dimension and a little bit more fun you can have with your with your uh, with your figure, with your image by how you're applying your colors and you're using your markers. So stamping blends and stamping right. All right? Okay, so now let's pull in our watercolor paper and I'm just going to cut this and I'm going to bring in my uh, my watercolor pencils now one of the other tools that is very useful is and they, again, these are available in the annual catalog, are what are known as, um, I guess they used to call water painters. And they have several sizes that you can get. Um, I've had mine a long time. These were the old ones that they, that they offer. And I even have some that I use in my watercolor paint set because I do I I do watercoloring as a as a hobby um so I don't have all of my watercolor painters but let's go ahead and do the same thing so just take your pencil and apply the color and the pencils are very soft so they will give they will the pigment will come off very easily. You see that? So what I usually do is I just kind of go ahead and I apply my color. And I do it rather lightly, staying within the lines. Okay, and you have to have a pencil sharpener, especially if you want to get into small figures. So any pencil sharpener will do. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not adding a lot of weight to my to my pencil and i'm gonna i'm gonna show you something here in a minute um and let me let me just let me just show you this right here oh no i can do it over here i'll do it on something else okay um let me grab another color because I want to I want to show you something. I'm going to grab my watercolor pencils and I'm going to grab real red and cherry cobbler. OK, these are two colors that are pretty much they're pretty close. This is the lighter color. So if these are stamping blends, this would be the lighter color and this would be the darker color. But they're not. They're just they're just colors, right? That's that's all that's all they are are just colors. So if we take this red and I'm just going to color this balloon with the red. And this is 
This is pure pigment. If you can imagine the watercolor pan that you had when you were in school, and I, I don't mean to be talking down to anyone. I'm just talking to those who may be intimidated with coloring and they're just looking for a little bit of, of explanation to give them confidence. Okay, so there's my red. Well, I can press down on this pencil and I can add more pigment to my paper. Because maybe I want to give this balloon a little bit more shape. And if you darken the outside of a, of a shape, it will begin to look more round. And if the inside, the inside is lighter, okay? Well, then I can take my cherry cobbler, which is the darker of the red, and I can add that color along the outside as well. Okay, you kind of see how there's there's some cherry cobbler in here, right there, okay. But we can do that with this one as well. Let's take our, our blue, and then let's just kind of add the darker color along the outside much like what we would do with our stamping blend. So maybe with this, we just do the dark color will kind of be at the top right here, right? We're kind of adding the pigment because we want to make this look more round, kind of like to the outside. You see kind of where my pencil is a little bit darker? And I'm not necessarily doing it on this side. I'm just kind of doing it, just kind of doing it on the outside of my, of my balloon, okay? So that's how I've applied the pencil. And I've applied it simply, and this is kind of the, the exercise that we used to, do is that you would start out pressing down very lightly and then you'd go darker and I'm just adding more pressure onto my pen, pa paper till I get very dark okay then we're going to grab our our water brush and we're going to start with the dark and look what happens. It all blends. So look at that. Isn't that beautiful? It just blends so nicely that it doesn't look like pencil anymore. Okay. And that's kind of what we're going to do with our image. So I've got my water pencil here and I always have a paper towel nearby because I want to control the amount of water that's on my paper. And I always want to start out um, without, with not with a lot of paper. I mean, sorry, I'm getting all excited here. N without, uh, with not, uh, without much water. And I'm just going to kind of go. And I don't know how much closer I can pull in before it starts getting a little blurry. But I'm just going to kind of go in with strokes, kind of, and I'm pulling in the dark is going into the into the light. And then I'm just going to look at that. Isn't that pretty? I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to pick up the pigment with my water. And all I'm doing is I'm just kind of dragging it over. And I may have a very light touch in the middle. And I may push, and see how I'm using my brush? I may even push some of that pigment in the corner. 
I could start out here in the middle with a very light color right here and push that water off to the edge. And look what that does. You get much more deeper color there. So let's try that. Let's start with the light down here. And I'm not putting a lot of water on my paper. I'm just kind of blending what's there, but I'm pushing the water up. So when it greets this darker pigment up here, look at that. Isn't that pretty? It just kind of forms just this really nice, really nice um, shading effect. Let's do the same over here. We're just starting off over here where the lighter pencil is and I'm just kind of wetting it so I'm blending and I'm just kind of pushing the water to the edge and then I'm going to pick up that darker color and there. Isn't that pretty? We're going to do the same thing over here. Just kind of grabbing this, kind of going down. And then I'm going to push it out. And you can always go back in with just a little bit of water because this is watercolor paper. It's a, it's a little sturdy. You can go back in. You don't want to re-wet it too many times, but you can go back in and kind of smooth it out a little bit. If that's what you want to do. Now this is going to be the fun one because just the just the pencil itself adds a lot of pigment as to how this this balloon is going to to look. So I'm going to kind of start out in the middle. I'm going to kind of let all that nice kind of pigment in the middle just kind of begin to kind of blend together and then I'm just going to kind of push it out and I'm just going to let that where all that deep pigment is. I'm just going to kind of Kind of let it just blend. Look at that. Isn't that just beautiful? So you can see now that I've done. I mean, look how beautiful that looks. That looks gorgeous. I just love it. I just get so excited when 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 uh I play with uh when I play with paints and and I can show you different things. So here are stamping right markers, blends, and watercolor pencils. There you go. Look at the different effects. The only color that's different here is this color, which is Bermuda Bay instead of Pool Party, because I just didn't have Pool Party in the in the watercolor pencil. But you can tell this is Calypso Coral. You can just tell the difference as you walk across these images on what you can kind of, the effect that you can get. So that when you look at something like this, this shouldn't scare you because all this is is round round shapes that you can use to have shadow you have a horse round shapes so you kind of begin to get an idea of where you could apply watercolor if you if you wanted to and i've got a um tutorial that i will put together to kind of walk through um watercolor and or rather I can just show you what I've what I've done I took this paper and I picked the colors which is pool party and it's got a little bit of real red let me just get these out of the way and I pulled in those colors to make this sleigh and I'm using my stamping blends and you can see where I've kind of blended the darker color here and I didn't have to add 
the color all over the horse. I just kind of added it where it needed it. And then I used the pool party, which is this color here, the predominant color with their clothes, the pool party and, and kind of the red. These are my notes here. Then I took this one. I love this paper. And I made this with the same, the same stamping blends. And I'm going to cut this out and make a card. But I did the same thing. This is balmy blue for the colors. I used mossy meadow. And then this is actually, I laid down ivory stamping blends. Then I used crumb cake light and dark. And look at look at that. See how it gave that really nice coloring there. And it really, it doesn't look as flat as, I mean, this, this, this is so flat. But then look how pretty that is. And I did the same thing with the horse. I did it all in smoky slate. And then I added the coloring, right? That smoky slate dark to kind of give it a little bit more dimension. And then this one, I love the paper. So I, I colored this one. Now this one was done with watercolor and I did the exact same technique I just showed you with the balloon using real red and cherry cobbler. And then I just used brown. I believe I used a pecan pie and early espresso to, um, to color. And I also, if you look at if you look at her little blanket, because this was the pencils, I was able to first color with Granny Apple Green, and then I was able to bring in and draw lines with Mossy Meadow to make that look like a plaid. So there's so there are some very um, there's some advantages to working with watercolor pencils that other uh, mediums don't have that are fun to explore and to make your cards. And uh, it's nothing to be, it's nothing to be intimidated by. Uh, and I hope that my demonstration here using the different, um, you know, using our, our watercolor pencils, our stamping blends. And our stamp and write markers. I'm hoping that that this live tutorial kind of. Um, kind of gave you some ideas, maybe some confidence. Um, if you're interested into some free shipping, Stamping Up is offering uh, 72 hours of free shipping. Go to my blog, stampartconnection.com. I'll have more information. If you sign up for my newsletter, you'll always get all the latest information. And, you know, take advantage of the free shipping to uh, stock up in some of your stamping supplies. And I'm really hoping that for those of you new stampers out there, that this kind of answered some questions. If not, please drop me a line. Um, I'm at cat at stampartconnection.com. Ask me some questions and I will... I will be sure to uh, to respond. So thank you so much for joining me. This is Kat Chancellor with StampArtConnection.com. Happy stamping.